Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on the equilibrium constant. So my objectives for today are going to be to go through the equations um, that are going to be used to obtain the equilibrium constant, and then uh, the steps in order to solve a chemical reaction problem um, where you might be looking for the reaction coordinate um, of a reaction, for example. All right, so to start, um, there's going to be four main equations you're going to see uh, that have to do with the equilibrium constant or that are going to be used to calculate the equilibrium constant. Um, and then you're going to see another bunch of equations, um, which I'm going to show later on, um, <clears throat> that also have to do with the equilibrium constant. So here are the, the four uh, main ones that you'll see. So the first one is uh, the one, the general equation that you're always going to go back to, okay? So you see k is equal to k0, k1, k2. So um, basically we're going to find k0, we're going to find k1, we're going to find k2 if we do have to find our k1, k2. And then um, we're going to plug those in, multiply everything together, and get our k. So for equation number two, you see that I've written... Um, Actually, before I get to equation number two, um, the equilibrium constant, I'm going to write on the side here so it's noted, it's only a function of temperature. Function of temperature. And when it's known, when we do know the equilibrium constant uh, of a specific reaction, um, we can use it to determine the composition of a system at equilibrium. So that's why it's uh, actually really important. Um, and then for equation number two, uh, k naught. So you can see we have e to the negative delta g uh, naught over rt naught. So your delta g naught is actually going to be as follows. Maybe draw a little arrow here. It's going to be delta g naught. And this is um, actually going to be found from your tables. I not from tables, and it's when the gas, the little knot that you see there on the top, is um, it just means a gas, liquid, or solid at one bar and twenty-five degrees Celsius. Okay, so G I not. I'll show you where that is on the tables right here. Okay, so you're going to be looking at your uh, specific species and then you're going to go to your table and find that change in Gibbs. And the V that you just saw, I'm going to get into that later, but it's really just this, um, the coefficient in front of your uh, species in the chemical reaction. But I'll, I'll give you an example later of that V. Uh, and then for number three, same thing again for the uh, delta H naught. Instead of going to the G on the table, you're going to be going to the H. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, same thing, delta H naught is equal to sum I, V, I, H, I naught. Okay, not too um, hard. There you go, and also note that K one, it's only you're you're only going to be calculating a K one when T naught does not equal T. So I'll write that here. When, or I'll write calculate K one when T naught does not equal T. Because if T naught equals T, then you'll just see here, um, that's going to go to 1. So then our whole exponent is going to be e to the 0, which is just going to be 1. So K1 is just going to be 1. Okay, So there's no point on going through and calculating everything if T naught and T are equal. And then for number 4, it looks a bit, uh, looks a bit complicated, but really it's not too complicated. Um, the only thing you have to note is that this tau here 
is uh, your temperature over your T0, which I've written right here. And what else? Yeah, here, these are all delta A, delta B, delta C, delta D. Um, these are your heat capacities uh, from your table. So right here, this is your A, B, C, A, B, C, Ds up here, okay? So um, I've already showed you how to use that in my heat effects video, how to read the tables and get the uh, heat capacity data from that. So it should, shouldn't be too complicated. And I've written that for, this is also true here, for delta B, delta D, delta C, and delta D. Okay, these are the same thing, but B, same thing, but C, same thing, uh, but D. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. The only hard part is uh, not letting this be too tedious. All right. That should make sense. That should make sense. Um, I was just showing the heat capacities and the delta H of formation and the delta G. All right. So here, these are your... Um, general equations that you're uh, going to need to s solve. Um, I want you to note that this VI here that you see in this one is calculated for uh, gaseous species only. So for gaseous species only. Okay? So, um, don't worry, I'm going to explain what this VI is on my next, uh, my next slide, so don't worry. Um, and then also note that this P0 that you see down here is standard state pressure, which is one bar. Okay, so standard one bar. So it's always going to be that, okay? So you might as well just write in one bar right away. Okay, so, um, yeah, the first one is the general gas phase, and then under that I've written ideal solution, gaseous, ideal gas, real mixture, liquid, and ideal solutions on the bottom. But really you're going to be usually dealing with the gaseous ones, the first the first three that I've written. Or maybe, maybe the fourth. Um... I guess all actually, but yeah, the gas ones are more, more common that we see those. All right. So, um, now I'm going to get into kind of like the nomenclature of what you've seen in my equations on the last slide. So here I've said that the mole fraction, um, is equal to N I over N. So the, the amount of moles of a certain species over the total moles in a mixture, um, which is also related to this funky stuff on the right-hand side of my equation. So you might ask, what is VI? And that is uh, right here, coefficient of species. And it's positive for products, negative for reactants, okay? So that's key to know. Uh, so if I give you an example here, I'll write the water gas shift reaction. I'm gonna write that up here on the top, okay? Just so it's gas, um, plus H2O gas, plus hydrogen gas. Um, so, for example, my carbon monoxide, um, the VI for carbon monoxide would be uh, negative 1. And then for H2O, uh, it would be negative 1 as well. But if I had a 2 in front of my carbon monoxide, let's say, then uh, it would be negative 2. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, the V, which is what you see right over here. It's not the same thing as the VI. Um, this is the sum of the VIs. 
Okay. So maybe I'll, sh I'll add a little, little sign here. Uh, and then E, the little thing that looks like an E, is called your um, reaction coordinate. And this is going to be different for every reaction that you have. So if, you, if you're given a problem and you have two reactions, well, you're going to have an E1 and an E2. Okay, so the reaction coordinate is going to change. And really what it is, is um, it tells us about the extent to which a reaction uh, has gone. So how how completed, I guess you can say, is the reaction. Okay, uh, and then you see I have n naught, so that's all the initial amount of moles, but it's actually the sum of them. Not, and n is the amount of moles total okay so not too complicated maybe I'll write my equal signs here to make that more clear um, yeah really really not too hard so let's say we're giving a problem and um, we've got to calculate uh, we've got to calculate the uh, extent of the reaction. So here I've just given you a few steps that you can follow to make it uh, easier. So the first step would be to balance your chemical reaction. That's that's the key because once it's balanced, uh, well, if it's not balanced, then your VIs, your coefficients are all going to be wrong. So you have to balance it to get make sure you get the right coefficients. Um, step number two I, uh, is to always get your k naught. Um, and then sometimes you might have a word problem where you're working backwards. So you have the extent and you're working backwards to get you're working backwards to get the K or something. But anyhow, um, if that's not the case and you are solving for the extent, uh, your second step would be to find K naught. So um, like what I said before, I've showed you how to find the change in Gibbs um, and then the R and the T naught. Pretty straightforward. Uh, step number three is if your t does not equal your t naught, then you can uh, you can happily solve for k one. So k one here, I'll just rewrite what it is. So exponent to h naught. Okay, not too hard. And then after that, um, you'd calculate your K2 from this equation that I've uh, shown you below. Step number five, you'd identify all your known values. So your initial, initial amount of moles, um, your, your amount of moles of uh, some species, I, um, pressure, um, your equilibrium constant. So identify all the things you know and write down. This is their values. Um, and then you're going to choose, uh, well, you're going to write down your equation for y. Okay, so at the beginning I said, this is your equation, yi is equal to n i naught plus sum of V, I, J, E, J, J, over and not Okay, and notice that um, these this VJ is calculated only for the gas. Okay, so this is only for gaseous components. Okay, uh, and then equation number. Um, not equation, step number seven 
would be to determine what kind of reaction are you dealing with. So is it going to be an ideal solution? Is it going to be an ideal gas? Is it going to be a real mixture uh, or an ideal solution? Okay. So, uh, or liquid. This would be liquid. Okay. Uh, so number eight is, um, since our mole fraction is written as a function of the um, reaction coordinate, which is what I've done right here, it's a function of the reaction coordinate, that E, um, plug it in, so plug it into number seven, uh, and use your prior knowledge uh, to find your activity coefficient your fugosity coefficient, etc. So um, I've already showed you in my fugosity video how to find things like um, your fugosity coefficient or the fugosity coefficient in a mixture. Um, so that's, or here, your activity coefficient. So these are things I've shown you and you can refer to my other videos um, if you don't remember how to find them. And then lastly, step number nine, solve for E or ease, depending if you have more than one reaction uh, or what, more than one reaction coordinate in that case.